Captain, we've hit a pocket of film degradation. For an entire generation, people have experienced Freedom 2000 on the small screen. The planet is a Class M spaghetti ball, Captain. In space, no one can hear you snooze. Here you go. Uh, Dark Star is an underrated classic. Ask me. We're approaching 61 Cygni, planet 27 for the 37th Tri-Dake observation. All scanners on. Well, Captain, I see 30 years hasn't changed the atmosphere any. It's just as deadly now as on our last visit. Nice. It'll take a lot longer than 30 years to clear that up. I'll take us in closer. Tape the pass by. Earth 2024. Signals indicate heavy gases have built up at surface level. Atmosphere verified at 6 km. This used to be Dollywood here. You know, I find it difficult to believe an entire civilization could just die like this. Well, Karan, it didn't happen suddenly. In fact, the changes were so gradual, they never understood what was happening to their world until the process was irreversible. Sad, really. Anyway, they lunch. Been forewarned. They were. But by the time they grasped the situation, they couldn't bring about the unity of purpose necessary to save the planet. Oops! This is a classic case of a civilization overwhelmed by its own technology. In the end, it was the Roku stick that did them in. We have taped the coordinates for the observation pass, planet 27, 61 Cygni. If no counter instructions, we will proceed immediately to galaxy 208, solar system 127, planet 3, for our 360th tri Deca report. Programmed arrival, 36 light hours. You guys need to work on your sci-fi jargon. It's all just numbers. Aye, aye, Captain. Star speed four. Star speed four? Are you mad? You're gonna get a star ticket. So what is this mission? Dispassionate, judgy analysis of defunct civilizations? Who benefits from this? Welcome to Freedom 2000, Southern Arizona's premier Y2K Preppers Conference. Sponsored by Igloo. Brought to you by a generous grant from Intermittent Gridlines. Log the entry course, please. Yes, sir. As you know, Captain, this is my first visit to this planet. I think you'll find it a fascinating world, Karan. I've been studying it now for ten centuries. Third planet from a star. Is it people? Oh, yes, it is. They call themselves man. I mean... <laughs> and their planet, Earth. Hope you like guns. This is Astron 7 calling Galaxia Kentron. We're making our first pass over planet 3, system 127, galaxy 208. All scanners on and recording. Brought to you by HIMS. How advanced are these Earthlings? Well, they're just about at the midpoint of their potential. Wow, that's Although generous. the trust of this development has taken place only in the past few hundred years. Anything approaching our level? Though different from us in many respects, they're on an evolutionary course not dissimilar to that which our own ancestors experienced mm, 250,000 years ago. In transition, then. Yeah, like and evolutionary the puberty. Which all sentient creatures must experience if they're to evolve toward a higher level of awareness. Captain, we have a visitor. That's just one of their space probes, Karan. Please log its position and polar bearing. Polar bearing? Where? Do Yikes! Do they all speak the same language? No, they speak diverse languages and have evolved into geographic divisions they call nations. Though certainly what they have in common as men far outweighs any fine distinctions of language. You'd think. While I'm adjusting the scanner, why not take a look at this tape? You guys use tape? It concerns one nation down there that has been of special interest to me these past few hundred years. Almost a hobby, you might say. Oh, let me guess what which one. distinguishes it from similar nations on this planet? Well, in a relatively short span of time, this particular country has evolved quite a complex and advanced economic system. One that may offer the best hope for balancing the tensions that always exist between the individual and the group. Nope! The social conflict between his rightfully private property Jeez. and what is public. In short, man versus the state. So these ancient, evolved aliens have never seen anything as amazing as capitalism. Uh -huh. In the continent of North America, the foundation was laid for a new social experiment. The Purge. Life for the American pioneer was, for the most part, independent and self-sufficient. And uh, these pioneers were indigenous, right? 
Hello? The early settlers had to supply their own food by hunting, fishing, and farming. But like they were born there, right? It was their land they were farming, right? Hello? Alien guy? What a big fish, Olaf. That is a very big fish. Yump and Yemeni, it was my big fish. Oh, Olaf, Yump and Yemeni. They immediately established pumpkin spice season. Ugh, what a big pumpkin, Ephraim. That is a very big pumpkin. He gives me credit for the blessings of God. Ephraim seems like a fun hang. The pioneers built their own simple cabins as well as making many of their own tools and furnishings. Most clothing was made of skin or homespun. Made of skin, Survival that's one way to say on that. Every member of the family doing useful work. Almost every necessity was produced in the home, even medicine. Even brain enhancing supplements. Ugh, what a big mouth, Hans. That is a very big mouth. Now open it. Take your ivermectin, boy. This climate of isolation and self-reliance bred a people with fresh spirits. Jeez. Do these aliens work for OAN? Who's bankrolling this propaganda? Thank you so much for watching Fun With Shorts. This series is supported by Patreon and patrons like these wonderful people right here. They get early access to new episodes and exclusive episodes every month. Also, check out the updated funwithshorts.com for DVDs and merch and all the good stuff. Thank you so much, everybody. I'll see you next time.